Let's go. Hey everyone, so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing a little bit of an easy run. Wanted to explain to you so far my first impressions of the new product that I unboxed from last week. I was able to try on a few times, including today's Ohio singlet that I plan to wear on every single marathon. And I'm also gonna be showing you my first impression of the Koros Pace 2 Elliot Kachogi Edition. So I've had both products now for the spanning of about eight to nine days, in which time I have been able to put in about seven workouts seven runs and so I just want to go and share with you the things that I have immediately noticed just by taking it out of the box one of my first concerns was whether it would be able to read heart rate accurately and I know that most running watches that be able to, if you're not using a chest strap that it's not gonna be entirely accurate anyways the core space 2 I know it's only had one just a single optical lens on the back of the watch in order to read heart rate Whereas my previous watch with a Garmin Forerunner 235, it had multiple optical lenses. That was my first concern is on whether it would be able to read heart rate quickly and accurately. And then now once it gets dialed in, what would be the variability? Would it be able to swing up and down throughout the run uh, in terms of error? And I have not had any issues whatsoever. Even on my easy runs, it was able to determine heart rate exactly in the range where I was accustomed to in the previous watch and even on my hard workouts for tempos, thresholds, and even speed intervals. So I didn't see any variability whatsoever in terms of how hard my heart rate is read on the watch, if there's any difference in terms of the max heart rate, resting heart rate, or even zone two easy pace. One of the things I definitely notice when using the watch is that the colorization I'm not sure if, how, if it's correct to say pixels. The interface is very, very nice. It's very easy to read and it's easily customizable. When I unboxed it, hooked everything up to the outlet for charging, uh, syncing it for the first time with my phone. It took no more than 20 minutes for us to download all the firmware, get everything all up to date. And that way it's all fully charged and ready to go. On the very first run, I immediately noticed that one feature that my previous watch didn't have is that it has an auto lock because many times before now it doesn't matter if it was two miles or 20 miles there's times where you kind of have to fidget with your hand a little bit and your wrist accidentally hits one of the buttons whether it was a an auto lap button or hopefully not the pause button and then suddenly your activity has been pausing you didn't realize it so with this watch it doesn't have that whatsoever Essentially, all you have instead of five buttons on a Garmin watch, this Koros only has two. And so simply auto lap, pause, resume button, and then you would have the unlock feature, which you would have to pretty much just turn the button in a swivel. So it's just something I have to play with, but so far I kind of feel as though when I unlock the watch, that if I don't do anything to it, it auto locks itself in about 20 to 30 seconds. I mean, of course you can go to the watch settings and remove that auto lock feature, but I actually kind of like it. So that way it kind of just protects yourself from any mistakes you might have on the run. So if you decide to have that feature on, as I plan to do, I just have to remind myself that in the last 30 seconds of a race or a workout, I just have to turn the top button clockwise to unlock it so that way as soon as you finish the workout or cross the finish line you can be able to save your workout appropriately with the accurate time when i completed my first workout and i was submitting everything online i quickly realized something i didn't i didn't like and it's not specifically with the watch itself it's just really the platform provided by koros and what I'm referring to is that there is no online capability when it comes to you putting in your workouts. And again, let me be comparing this to Garmin since that's what I used before. But with the Garmin Connects platform, I can just go on the computer, create my custom workouts, and then have it sync to my watch. But with Koros, everything is on the mobile app. 
So if I have to do a very specific workout such as a six by 400 or three by two mile or anything that I can create custom wise, I would have to do so manually on the app and scrolling through every step, you know, finger by finger, click by click. Instead of doing it, I would think a little quickly and more easily on the computer. The second thing is that there is no community feature uh, using using Koros. So fellow runners that I was connected to using Garmin, I no longer have that. So if I wanted to have that community feature where you follow my activity, I'm able to follow you back and see how you're doing in your training, I would have to go through the third party apps and essentially just connect my chorus activity to essentially a map my run, map my ride or Strava. Hey, that's just something I noticed immediately along the way. So that's a little bit of a bummer there. So my coach uh, cannot necessarily uh, track my workouts on Koros. So I'd have to be a little bit more tra transparent and open-ended when it comes to how I did on my runs using the Koros watch. Again, being a little bit nitpicky here, but purchasing the Eli Kachogi edition, yes, you get the colors on, on the watch, which is really nice. Rather than having to pick a, a specific color that is full red, full black, orange, green, things like that. So it's a, it's a nice design feature, but just spending 50 bucks more to get the Eli Kachogi edition, you get the pod, is definitely well worth the investment. Having the pod on those specific workouts does provide me, I think, seven extra features of data, which I personally love. I'm an analysis nerd, uh, so it does give me information like, what's my hip placement? Uh, do I lean more on my left foot or my right foot? So it's good to see if I'm 50-50, 51%, 49, things like that. It does track contact time, how much is spent on every foot in the milliseconds. So that's really cool. And by the way, every single feature, they give you a guideline as far as how does your information rank in terms of poor to excellent. It would be better that if you don't like where you're at, I would prefer that Coros provide extra information or at least some ideas for, okay, how would you want to improve? And the last thing that comes to mind, every company out there, every running company out there, I should say, uh, that has a running watch available in their product line, will have their own algorithm in terms of predicting how well can you do in the 5K all the way to the marathon. And that was my little pet peeve with Garmin because while the 5 and 10K were relatively close, as you extrapolate and predict that data all the way to the marathon, it was not even possible. Where Garmin was predicting I was able to do a 317 marathon, which one day I would like to do that. One day I will do that. But based on recent fitness data, based on my activity, I'm not there yet. For their algorithm to predict that, it wasn't necessarily accurate. So the nice thing about Koros is that when you start having the watch, they don't automatically predict where you're at. It doesn't know where you are in terms of your activity and fitness levels. So when you set up the watch for the very first time, it requires a full week of activity before it begins to predict where you are. And it will continue to predict on a seven day rolling basis. So that's pretty good that it will continue to adjust and adjust and give you more of a reading. So based on the Koros predictive times, the five and 10K are pretty much around where, where I'm already at. For the 5K, my PR is 21.21, 10K, 45.40. Now, once you go to the half marathon, that's where, I, of course, I need a little more practice, honing my skills and how to figure out how to go into the pain cave and how to fit strong in those really long, lengthy races. But, but course is much more accurate, where my PR in the half marathon is 151, I think 19. And then the full marathon, uh, when it comes to in-person races, is a 3.56.04. Or a uh, three, yeah, 3.56.04. So, so it's very, very accurate for it to say that, hey, you have the ability 
to do a 340, 345 marathon. That's not out of impossibility to do. And based on the last training block, that's where I was aiming for. And because I have two marathons this fall, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be wanting to strive all the way for a 340, but it just, we'll see depending on how I feel. Everything that Chorus has, they definitely put their money into data, analytics, predictive analytics. And so everything is there and I like it. Uh, but as far as other features, being able to be a little bit more social and the compatibility and being interactive with uh, working from an office and just trying to uh, store your future workouts on a computer, that can kind of, those things need a little bit more improvement. So hopefully in the near future, they will make those adjustments and get there. So I hope you guys liked my first impression of the Coros Pace 2. And if you particularly like the design features of the Ellie Kachoga edition using the Kenya colors. So those 5,000 units that they're, that they're main planning to manufacture is coming to an end. So just make sure to get yourself a watch and that particular brand will come with the performance pod for added information, data, and accuracy. So thanks everyone. A full review of the Course Pace 2 will be coming very, very soon. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this, this easy run. So that way my three hour long run tomorrow can go without a hitch. Take care everyone. Make sure to dream big. Keep putting in the hard work and make the impossible possible. Take care everyone and see you on the next one.